Hi guys, welcome. My name is Dr. Anthony Cliff and today we're doing a very, very quick tutorial of how about to add um, timestamps to your transcripts as you're transcribing in NVivo. So if you've not seen already, I've done quite a few videos already on NVivo um, and transcription and, and how to analyse data, that kind of stuff. Also got some videos on SVSS as well, so any quantitative researchers out there uh, talking through how to do that. If you're not done already, please subscribe. Um, and you'll find more videos like this uh, on my research playlist. And also, if you've got any questions, um, please do drop them in the comments um, and I'll try and help. And if you have any videos that you'd like to do, um, also please drop them in the comments. So this video has actually been brought up. There was a comment that was delivered uh, 10 minutes ago uh, asking about this. So, so I will try and get those videos done when I can. So timestamps are important, um, certainly for you as a researcher, because um, if you've got the timestamps, you can go back to um, that part and the particular part of the audio, which is really, really important, it's really beneficial to you. Um, and it's also as well if you want to highlight certain things to a reader as well. Plus, it just looks a bit neater as you're going through and they're reading it. Um, timestamps are always useful to have. So you've got your file set up, so you've got your NVivo set up, and if you don't know how to do that, I've got a video on that. So we want to obviously upload our audio file first and foremost. So you want to click Import on the top, then you want to click Files, then you want to go ahead and find a file. So I'll just throw this one in here. Click Open, and then you just want to click Import. NVivo will take a little while to upload it. Again, depends on how big the file is. I think... Um, there's a 200 megabyte limit per audio file uh, to upload, so if you're doing it by audio, there shouldn't be any issues whatsoever um, with that. If you've got videos or anything like that, it's slightly different, um, but obviously we're just working on audio today. So we'll just let NVivo do its thing, and it'll think about it, and then it'll upload it. Okay, so um, NVivo has now uploaded that file. Whatever name that you give it originally in your file will be translated across, so feel free to give that a different name. Um, I often give this a description as well. Uh, I'm not going to do it here because it's just a test, but typically um, what date that it was taken, um, who uh, did you have it with, be that a first name, last name, or a pseudonym. Um, pseudonyms are often best for ethical purposes. Um, and if you have any descriptions around about that, so you know where did it take place, um, how did it go, those kind of things as well, just to help you as a researcher really. No one's going to see this, it's all about you um, and just to help you manage your data. So just so we know, um, here as well, we have the duration, so um, you know, close to 47 minutes. Um, and you can embed this into your project, but again, it all depends on how big your audio file is. So everything else, leave as is, if you're happy to and then click OK. OK, so NVivo is now uploaded um, my audio file. Uh, see here, you can find that in the data file here on the left hand side. It'll just open up automatically. So that's fine there. What we need to do now is double click on that and NVivo will open up. So NVivo will open up your audio file. It looks something a little like this. So along the top here is your audio. And then here is how we will transcribe. So um, if you look at the videos that I have, I do have a, a whole video on transcription, which talks through this in depth. But I'll just go through this very, very quickly, what you need to do. You need to go to the top right hand side and click edit. You really want to make sure this is clicked, otherwise it won't work. So make sure that edit is, is ticked. What happens is this button here that says transcribe. That will then become highlighted if you click on that. So now we're in the transcribe mode. So that's really, really important. What you need to do is you need to click play and that will start playing your audio. It will add a timestamp in there and you type as you go through and then you can pause it. But as soon as you click stop, it will add in a timestamp for you. So I'm just going to do that, but I'm just going to mute my audio because obviously um, this was um, an actual uh, transcript. So I'm just going to do that just to show you how that works. I'm just going to mute my audio now. Okay, so as I've gone through there, if I listen to that audio, I paused it so I could write what I wanted to do. As soon as I click stop, my timestamp gets added there. So if I just mute my audio again and then click play, that will add a new timestamp. 
So as you can see, we've now added a new timestamp, which is really, really important um, as you go through. Carry on writing as you would, and then you can, uh, obviously, as soon as you click stop, it's going to add a new one. So if I click stop there, we can see that's how it's going to work. Really, really important um, to do that. Of course, if you pause it, that's absolutely fine. How I typically do it is I'll pause it, and I'll only click stop when they've moved on to a new question. So um, you might want to have a timestamp per minute. I personally prefer doing it um, per question. Reason for that is if I look at number two, and this is going to be my second question, let's say, I know that from that timestamp to that timestamp is all about question two. Really, really important. What's a really good benefit of doing timestamps as well? If I just right click this, if I just code it, um, and again, I have a video how to do this um, very, very quickly um, when I go through my um, video all about coding and how you transcribe um, and how you analyze your data. Um, so just bear with me while I do this very quickly. Click test, click OK. Now, if I go to my nodes, which again, if you watch the um, analysis, the thematic analysis section uh, video, this shows you how to do this in depth very, very quickly. So here, that's what I've coded. And if I go to audio, that'll take me directly to that part in the audio. Why is that important? If you're doing um, verbatim, so if you're more interested in how they've said something, um, then you can go back and see, is there any inflection of speech there? Are they um, raising their voice? Are they lowering their voice? That kind of stuff. If you're doing it non-verbatim, you probably really don't need this, um, this function of the system, but it is there if you need to. So that's it, guys. Really, really simple, really straightforward of how to, um, how to generate timestamps. Then typically what you would do, you would just export that then. Um, and that ought to be what I do. I just copy and paste that into a Word document. I'll tidy it up, make sure the spelling's correct, all that kind of stuff. And then you've got your transcript there, all sorted with your timestamps. Dead easy, dead simple. Okay, thank you guys.